Have you ever watched one of my reptile room tours and seen all the animals and wondered how much can this possibly cost to maintain? Well, this is the video for you. Let's get into it. In today's video, I'm answering your questions about the reptile room. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, links down below, click the show more tab and it will expand and show you all the links that are relevant to the channel. And on Instagram, I made sure you guys were aware that I was making a reptile room tour. I asked you guys for your questions so I could make this video. Obviously, before I get started, I do have to say, if you are watching this video and for some reason you have haven't checked out the reptile room tour, make sure you go back to my previous video or links in one of these two corners, I can't remember which. <laughs> there you'll be able to check out what the reptile room looks like, as well as maybe formulate your own questions and leave them in the comments below. That way maybe I can make another video just like this one to inform you all out there. I do want to say thanks to Dylan, Animals at Home creator, the network that runs on Animals at Home. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dylan. I am the host of the Animals at Home podcast. Welcome to the video. If you guys haven't checked him out, make sure you go subscribe to his channel and watch the podcast. He produces a podcast every single week where he talks to industry leaders in improving reptile husbandry and leading to a more naturalistic style of keeping overall. So if that interests you, I'll leave his links down below as well for you guys to go check out. The first question we'll be answering today comes from Gizmosaurus, and they asked how long it took to set up the reptile Room. Now I do have an actual video and some video footage of the whole moving process so if you guys are interested in a moving video slash like moving my animals all the way across the country <laughs> driving then let me know in the comments down below and I will be sure to answer or to make that video for you guys. But that was about four months ago now, five months ago actually. It's still really not done. Everything was in here and kind of set up, like whether they were in bins or just not set up tanks or whatever, in like a day. But obviously we're still improving setups, we're still upgrading things, we're still building new tanks. That's still ongoing. So I'm guessing it'll be more or less set up by the end of summertime, probably like eight to 10 months after moving here, things will be more or less in where they they need to be and how we like them. The next one comes from Dilf Life. He asks, what's the hardest animal to maintain? If it's just kind of based on time, then it's definitely breeze neonate hog noses because my goodness, those things take up so much time. We could be sitting there or standing there feeding them for up to like two hours trying to get them to eat. And unfortunately, not all of them eat. So it's a lot of work and a lot of time. If it comes to kind of overall setup and degree of difficulty, I would probably say the dwarf chameleons that I have, the Bradipodian Thunderbates, they are most likely the most difficult. Now, Monsters in the Sky asks, what are some animals that you would like to add? Answer that question by saying that there might be a few projects coming in the next couple weeks from Europe. So if you guys are interested in a Europe import pickups or like, additions, whatever, let me know in the comments down below and I will try and get that video done for you guys. It's, it's gonna be sweet. There's some really cool animals. There are still some that I'd like to work with, mostly dart frogs. Um, I do have my lead on a couple of them that I'm really looking for. He's actually raising froglets, so it's just time, really. In a couple months, those will be arriving, but we're definitely slowing down here. Brie would like to get one more hog nose, but beyond that, to be totally honest, I think we're kind of done after this. There might be a few additions here or there, but for the most part, the room's pretty full. Things have got to get done before we add more reptiles. The next question comes from Alden Dressler. He asks, how many species do we have in the room? As of filming this video, we have 21 different species of reptiles in the room. Obviously, that doesn't include individuals. We have about 50 or so individuals. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. Now there was several people, including Brittany, Jim, and Colin, that asked about the lighting and how we have it set up and how everything's wired and how's the electrical in the house. Let's answer that. Basically how we have the lighting is we have most things with grow bulbs. Uh, it's either LEDs or just T5 high output bulbs. And then we have heat lights as needed on the Euromastix as well as Striker. We have a deep heat projector. On Breeze Rainbow Ball, we have a radiant heat panel. 
And then everything else is just kind of as needed. We use a lot of Sun Blasters and Arcadia LEDs because those can actually daisy chain together. So you can plug in one outlet and run like eight different lights off it. That includes UVB and I'm still waiting for somebody to make a linkable heat source. Please, Arcadia, Sun Blaster, somebody make them universal. That would be great. That actually brings up another question and perfectly trends into what about the ambient temps, humidity, and lows in the room throughout the year. We do have a thermometer in the middle of the room and we found that the temperature will go as cold as it gets at about the low 60s. I I think there was like a day or two where it hit like very high 50s in here and that's just because the temperature of the house dropped a lot. As you can imagine with all these lights and stuff in summertime it does get relatively toasty in here. The average is about 82 degrees so it's definitely warm but it's not unbearable or life-threatening to anything and even towards the ground it gets a lot cooler like we do have the Thai bamboo rat snake which likes cool temperatures and it's always very cool. In terms of humidity, the humidity in here right now is about 40%. And then if the doors are open to outside during the summertime, it'll raise to about 60%. And of course, after mistings and stuff like that, it bumps up a little bit. During the summertime to help mitigate some of the heat, we do have a fan running at the door just to get some of that fresh air out from the basement into the room and keep it circulating. And of course, because in Canada, it's winter eight months of the year here, we have a heater just in case things get a little too low. Moving on to the next question from E. Gray, Jared, Drew's Got Critters, Amused Little Piper, all asked, what is your favorite setup and why? Now Bree's not here to answer it, but I know Breeze is either her brand new Chihua tank or she actually really likes Striker's tank. So those are her top two, I suppose. And to be honest, I think mine is actually the chameleon setup. It's just so naturalistic. I could use a little bit more plants in there. And I think in the summertime, I will be adding some more ficus and such, but as is, it's all live plants. It is very well set up with the lighting, the LEDs, and the UVB. Okay, so now, take a, a, a sip of your coffee, everybody. Because this is the most asked question that you guys asked on that poll. It was asked by Alwa So, Fujitsu, Mike Letter, Alec Wallace, Sunshine Heaton, Pommy Detail. That's funny. How much is the electricity for this room? I'm living with my girlfriend. Her parents have a fairly large house, and I was scared that like electricity was probably like a thousand dollars a month. In order to research this question, I figured I would ask Bree's mom what the cost of electricity was to run the whole house. And I was actually shocked to find out that the total electricity bill for this relatively large home was only about $300 to $350 a month. What was interesting is we were actually able to compare electricity bills from when I got here with no reptiles, although keep in mind, Bree still had a bunch of reptiles, to when I fully moved in and everything's running now, and it only went up about 100 bucks. So, with that said, it costs about $100 in electricity to run the reptile room. It's actually good for me to know too, because when we move out, we'll have to know these things. Now, a couple of you, most notably Quinn Schneider asked, where do we get all the racks? You can get them pretty much at any hardware store. They're nothing special. I got mine from Costco, Brie got hers from Lowe's. You can get them at Home Depot. Basically, any hardware store will sell them. That's all I got. The next question comes from Justin JF, and he asked, how long does feeding take? That's a good question, considering the size of the room and how many animals that we have. So if we are doing a full feeding, including the previously mentioned uh, difficult to feed hog noses, feeding can take like two and a half to three hours. Now, two hours of that, could be feeding those hogs. So it's an extremely variable process that we go through. If we're just coming in here and doing Pangea and crickets, and even mice as well, but not feeding the baby hogs, it'll take about 20 minutes to half an hour. And that's just us like going through feeding everything, probably no more than 20 minutes. So it might be kind of a surprise, but we have a system 
We showed you guys in the feeding video, which is like a 45 minute video, but it links up here if you guys wanna go check it out. It shows what we do for all the animals. It shows kind of the process that we go through and some of the time-saving tricks that we use. And the last question comes from Luliza, and she asked, what is the maintenance like on the planted tanks and vivariums? I don't have a schedule. And in fact, one of the tanks that you guys are seeing right now is extremely overgrown. There's nothing in it, it is just a plant tank, so I'm not actually going to trim it. If there's other animals living in there, typically we let them all overgrow and then just go one day and spend 20 minutes going through, opening the bins, and just taking a chainsaw to everything. That's a hyperbole, chill. We use little pruning scissors. We just go through and we take out any of the cuttings that we need. We can go propagate, we can do whatever we want with them. I guess to answer your question, we don't really have a schedule, but I would say it's about every three months or so when they start to need the trimming in order to keep things manageable. I'm sure you guys have seen Hugo running around in the background of the video all day. Uh, I think we're going to sign off here. So I want to thank you guys all very much for watching. We appreciate it. If you have any questions about the reptile room, leave it in the comments down below. I might be able to do another one of these videos for the next reptile room that I film. Hugo and I both want to say thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you click the like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. And with that being said, we'll see you hopefully next week. Later.